Hey guys, Basil Wolf from Grayson Hobby, and today is the day we do the video on the XM Plus install on the M3 by Dietone, three inch quad. Mm -hmm. We asked you guys to give us 100 likes over a week, and we got 170 in three days. So, you guys, pretty cool out there, I can't. And the consensus was everybody wanted free sky installs, so we're gonna do an XM Plus install. Um, for those of you that did want Spectrum, check out the GT R90 video, it's the same pinout. In this video, we're gonna do a quick install of the XM Plus receiver. We're gonna show you how to mount your um, antennas and how to even better secure your VTX antenna. Yeah, so this is gonna be on the uh, M3SX, the Stretch X. Um, setup's gonna be pretty much the same for the Plus. The only difference is the antennas we ran backwards instead of forwards because of the angle of the arm. Stay around to the end, we have some kind of contest. We're gonna at least try for the first time, so that'll be the end of the video. And actually, Will does, but before that, he goes over the little pinouts between the old version and the new version. Yeah, there's version one and version two of the flight <coughs> controllers, and also I tell you where to mount the XSR. Right. Or RXSR, sorry. Yeah. All right, so here it is. Well, what receiver are you gonna install here today? All right, so I guess uh, we're gonna install the XM Plus. Now on this receiver, you're gonna wanna update the firmware before you install them, because I haven't come across one yet that has the firmware pre-flashed on it for the RSSI. Uh, you have two options. There's an uh, RSSI on channel eight or RSSI on channel 16. Uh, I usually use the 16 one, eight supposedly is faster uh, with less channels, but I just use 16, that way it gives more options to it. And then the other option is there's an RXSR um, receiver. That one has the ability to use smart port. Being as we have OSD to play with and the smart port and everything are, is not really needed on this one in my opinion. It's just more wiring, more stuff to break, et cetera, more setup. So I personally would probably just go with an XM Plus on this particular one. I put an XM Plus on mine. You can honestly get away with XM, you don't really need to have the XM Plus, but it's one of those things, it's personal choice on that one. All right, well, you kind of threw me for a loop here, so what, what's really the All first right. step? We'll do a, probably a video on this later, but if you want to have RSSI on an XM Plus or an XM, which is what we're gonna be using, yeah. um, you're gonna need to update the firmware. What I found to do is take a servo extension, whether you take an, uh, a standard servo extension and cut the shroud off so you got the pins, or take the pins that come with the receiver, plug it into a, um, a double-ended one, and then you're gonna have to put it in the right pins. If you don't do the pin orientation right, it won't flash. And guys, you gotta be careful doing this because you can technically break your receiver. This way I've done it, works for me. So I'm gonna go to the firmware and you're gonna have to download the firmware from FreeSky's website, get the right receiver, and you're gonna have either channel 16, channel eight, or just standard. I'm gonna flash this with channel 16. Writing in. Takes about a minute. All right, so that's step one. So now what? Okay, so again, we haven't taken the, the quad apart or anything like that. This is done from the outside. You're gonna take, for the XM Plus, the factory's already soldered up your positive, negative, and then signal wire for S-Bus. This is on an S-Bus line, and that's what the XM Plus and XM are. So this install is gonna be the same for both versions, the XM and the XM Plus. So I'm gonna cut the leads off, just cut the header off. I'm gonna get the wire for the receiver. If you guys have seen the GTR90 video, you've pretty much already seen this. So how much are you stripping off there? Uh, just just enough to solder into the receiver. Like about a couple, couple millimeters. millimeters. There you go. What are you looking for in the meantime? Uh, something to put paste on it. Okay, like a brush? Yeah, brush, toothpick, anything. Okay. All right, so we so got flux on the wire. So, so this is called solder paste flux, all right? Uh, but I'm going to set it to 400. 300, 300 degrees Celsius to 400 degrees Celsius okay. for small wires like this. Okay. Um, you just don't want to hold heat, uh, hold the iron on anything like that too long. Okay. You shouldn't have to with this kind of stuff. Ten here. So let's see, one one thousand, almost like a one second, one second on the wire. Yes. Even better. <laughs> oh, so you can use the solder to. Yeah, flux. I'm just gonna put a little flux where the pins go. Okay. Kind of stuck in the corner here, so uh, solder, tin it. It. And see how quick it flows to it. Yeah, flux makes really everything it. so much faster. So you, you do both sides? No, I'm just gonna do it that way. Okay. Make sure it goes through. through okay. All right. So far, so, so good. Clean your so. iron. Keep your iron clean. Tip, because if you get all that oxidized solder on it, it's not gonna solder that good. Right. Okay. All right. So, so what we, we got here, you gotta remember, we got three wires. You got signal, positive, and ground. So now we got the signal, which is the white wire here. The positive, which is the red, and the black, which is the ground. Okay. So now, get my iron, piece of 
this way. You just gonna hold it on there? Uh, yeah, I'm gonna hold it because I forgot to bring the jig in. You know. This is usually when a helping hand would help. Yeah, a helping hand would help. But if you can do it without instead, a I hand. use a camera in the face when I'm doing the <laughs> soldering. But if you could uh, do it without a helping hand, then everyone with a helping hand can do that. Now, how's it? How's that wire staying on? Oh yeah, I'm just kind of. There's three wires. Okay. All right, so you got three wires there. Ready to fly? Um, at this point, I would probably, before you shrink tube it, before you do anything else, I would probably have the receiver, you know, not touching anything. If you're, you know, worried about shorting anything out, maybe run the shrink tube over, but don't shrink it yet. And this would be a good time to, one, hopefully you've already powered up the quad before you did any modifications to it, powered up, make sure the motors work on the motor tab, etc. Did you do that to this one? Yeah, this one was tight. Okay. Um, but basically this would be a good time to one test the bind make sure you got rsi make sure the firmware flash and all that because it's a lot easier at this point to go back and fix it if you haven't right. done it already plugging this in holding the power button the same yeah time. that's the part so you got the bind button here wait should this be on it doesn't matter okay plug it in you're gonna have both lights on so we got receiver it's in bind mode let me get a model here because you have a red and the green light yeah again for the xm you're gonna want D16. If you got RSI on channel 16, make sure in 16. If you're not gonna run 16 channels on the RSI, you can turn it down to the, the eight Thanks. or so. Hit the bind button, and the you'll see the red one. start flashing. That means it's it's found the bound. So I'm gonna can't I'm gonna press the button again on the radio, stop the bind. Okay. This will still be flashing. I'm gonna power cycle. So that stays on the whole time. Yeah. Okay. And then I'm just gonna hit, go ahead and hit the button there so it set the fail safe on the receiver. What button did you hit? The bind button again. Okay. So yeah, and then now we got it bound. So it's saying it's bound. Hook up to the computer. Say you know, make sure your endpoints and all that are there. So explain to me. I, I you missed that set. When you bound it up, hit the bound button when it's turning on. Oh, once it's powered back up and bound, I just set the uh, fail safe on the receiver. So what's that fail safe? With what the throttle down and all that. That way, if you lose radio signal. Okay, so that's how you fit set set on the receiver. Safe. Yeah. Okay. Then we know this is working, so now we're going to go back and we're going to shrink tube this. Okay. Is it hot? Ah, son of a... On this particular one, what I actually like doing is not running the wires on the outside, running on the inside. I'm going to actually get the receiver mounted up here, so it's easy to access. I can see the status LED. I can get to the bind button if I ever have to get again. And it's not um, if you didn't want to, you can run it upside down. It's up to you, whatever. Um, and I'm gonna get away from the flight controller. Now, that being said, I am gonna open this up to install this part over here. I'm just gonna take So we got the hatch. Now, be careful guys, when you do open this up, you gotta remember the camera's still attached, so we have to unplug the camera. All right, so we got the camera unplugged. The little hatch rolls back, okay. The receiver, I like to twist the wires right here. Um, just look cleaner, I guess, uh, less likely to something come up, you're right. Something. Get caught on. Mm -hmm. um, and then I'm going to put the antennas facing forward here. Now, what I am going to do on this, I'm going to need two zip ties. And this is just double sided tape in this case. Right, um, so double sided tape. So, what I'm going to do is I just want to figure out in this case, about that line. So, I'm going to cut it across here. And then I'm going to take the one side off here. And I'm actually gonna lay it down in here. Oops, looks like I cut it a little wide. So about in the middle of that plate, closer to the front of the camera works a little better so you don't hit the, the TBS port. And then feed the receiver through here, like this. And then I'm gonna lay, put the antennas back through it, which there's probably a better way of doing that now that I look at that. <laughs> But um, up here. Okay. So you. So now it's gonna sit in the middle here. Which when you're crash, if you crash anything with the prop nuts and the props, you're probably not gonna hit the receiver. Um, but I just don't want the receiver up against the flight controller and causing vibrations. So you only took the double sided stickiness off of one side, right? You, yeah, I left you, it on the other side. Um, yeah, you don't want on any, this. Yeah. Will just track also the dirt. Yeah. Right. And then from there, um, I just take two zip ties here. Small ones? Yeah, these are. So um, you're using the tape and zip ties to secure it. So 
so I'm not going to tighten anything up 100% just yet. Um, or just cut for that, it, or cut yeah, because you'll see if you if you put the receiver too far back, those will be touching the the port right there. So with the receiver mounted forward, and obviously you don't want to have it resting on the bind button. But you can see where I got the receiver. It's it's more forward bias than in between these two little standoffs. So it's about a you know a third of the way up. And then the antennas, I kind of like running them on the arms, on, on the front arms and backwards. It seems to work well. That's what you saw in our last video. Downside with that, guys, is if you do want to get this hatch open, like right now, I can get the hatch open and closed, no problem. If I ever need to work on anything, which really you probably shouldn't have too much. Um, but if you run the antennas up here, you can still open the hatch. All you gotta do is unplug the camera. But for the sake of the way I like it, I'm gonna run the zip ties on the arms. Okay. So you can so. get the vine buttons right on top, right? Yeah. Okay. So, so now. I'm gonna run both these antennas down the middle. I'm gonna go ahead and put the shell back together, plug in the camera. And again, you got the wires. When you're putting it together, make sure you don't pinch the antenna in these, uh, in between the metal frame. And I'll go back and tighten these up last. But I'm just um, then we're just gonna need some zip ties. Let me get some zip ties. The motor is some blue tie wrap. There you go. All right. Color, so see you color I'm just gonna slide these up. And so now what do you do? So I'm gonna take the zip ties here. I'm gonna run them around just like the factory did. So you just literally just have them over. You could do under or over the wires. But you just so over what wires? The ESC wires? The motor wires. Yeah. Basically, I slid the factory one up, and make sure you don't pinch the wires against the corner of the frame. If you pinch in the corner, you can cut the wire and short it to the frame. So we've got that one. We'll do this side as well. And I got these up against where the, the groove is pretty much there. Um, and then I just take the wires, kind of push them in to where there's a little bit sticking out. The antenna wires, you mean? Yeah. Those of you looking, we got the antenna coming from the coming top from the here, yep. running in between, down. In the, down the middle, okay. down under this blue zip tie that we have here that we put okay. on, and then oh, okay. it's gonna be going out. All right, that so looks a lot then, easier now when it's, uh, it's okay. We're gonna put shrink tube out and like that. Both, I've heard both. I don't know what the tech right answer, but I heard you want a little bit of antenna exposed, and I heard it's okay to cover it all. Shrink tube is not gonna block all right. All right, so. Biggest thing is the more active antenna you got out, the easier it is to get cut in the prop. So like in this case, I'm actually gonna tuck that in more. I think that's a little too far out for my liking. Both so are on there now. Both antennas in there. Shrink tube antennas, so the antennas are out. Um, and in the way, you wanna use a fairly rigid zip tie. Um, if you use too soft of a zip tie, it's gonna flutter around, the prop could catch it. Uh, also, if you do it really long, it, they tend to get thrown into the props too. So I like to do it just where it's, you know, even if it's pointed all the way up, see so pretty much really far up, it's not gonna be into the prop. Got that all set up. I'm gonna go through, go back, and I'm gonna tighten up these screws. That's from the frame? For the okay. frame. Yeah, I'm gonna do this before I make these tight, because if you don't, otherwise you can actually push this frame in a little bit and think. Careful not to cut any wires, because you got wires right yeah. under that. Don't cut the, these tie wraps. <laughs> yeah, don't cut those tie wraps. One thing I did find, the factory just puts a single zip tie here. Um, I'm actually going to go back and re-zip tie this antenna. Because they're probably expecting you to take it apart anyway to yeah. put it in. Yeah, but I'm actually going to zip tie it with this up. But you're going to zip tie it up and then just put a little piece of shrink tube or tape or something like that and hold that up. All right, so you got some nice blue shrink wrap there. Yeah, I guess I was when I was buying shrink tube, blue was the color of the day. Oh, um, so. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right, so I'm just going to do that. Now I'll get the zip tie out. But look, it's too tight, right? That's not too tight. No, you don't want it super tight to where it's going to pull the uh, connector off. Okay. Okay. You have a little slop in that. Is that it? Then that's it. That's uh, other than setting up the computer, setting your endpoints, sub trims, all that. Um, that's pretty much all there is to it for free sky installs. Little bonus here. Um, so guys, there's two versions of the flight controller out there. So how do I know which one I have, Well, All right, so without, look, without knowing like the printing on it, you'll see there's pins going all the way across and there's less pins on this one. Uh, I believe it's 10 pins on the version one and 14 pins on the version two. Okay. Um, you'll also see the little uh, PPM S bus and the 3.3 five volt pad on this version and you won't see it on this one. There's a Fury F4M and a V2. Um, the difference in the V2 was where the solder pads were. Now I've had a couple people ask me, hey, what do I do? I don't have the uh, S bus or the PPM pad and I don't have the five volt, three volt solder pad like the, uh, like the Diatone GTR and all that had. 
Um, if you do have that itch situation, come on. that red wire, which is normally, let's see, the fourth one up. So one, two, three, four. That's normally the five volt there. You're gonna actually desolder the red one there and you're gonna move it down one. So this is the 3.3. That's the five. So if you have spectrum on a 3.3, you're gonna use there. If you got spectrum on five volt, you're gonna use there. Um, also, if you have a five volt spectrum, you can go back to using the back pins here, here, and here. And X or R XSR, and you wanna use the, the uninverted uh, port on the receiver. Um, you can use TX6 right here, which is the second little one in. So it's the fourth pin over from the back. Um, which one's TX6 draw line to? Right here. So this is TX6. Okay. Okay. So, oh, to get, oh, it's in order. Yeah. Okay. So that right there is we're gonna solder the uninverted, the little circle on the on the receiver to there if you want smart port to work. Um, again, I choose not to use the RXSR on this size quad. All right guys, as promised, we got a little bonus here. We're gonna do a giveaway. We're gonna start small, that way we don't screw it up. Which so, we probably will, but right. it's okay. <laughs> so we're gonna give away a free toolkit from the Rotor Riot quad camp that was here held at Grayson Hobby a couple of weeks ago. And Along, a Grayson Hobby lipo bag. Yep, so you have to subscribe to our channel, like this video, hit that little bell notification, and you have to comment, because the software we're gonna use needs to have all that criteria. So again, subscribe, like, hit that bell notification, and comment below something pretty cool. And the winner will get this free and free. So if you live in the US, we'll ship it to you free, no problem. Outside the US, or Mars, or Venus, or the moon, call SpaceX, you have to, you're on your own about that one. So inside the US, free shipping, outside, you're on your own, for, you have to pay us for shipping. Right, so there is the video of the XM Plus install on the M3. So this we've, we've knocked out the intro, the capacitor mod, and the receiver install now. So what's next, guys? So next is just to fly and do some speed tests. And yeah, if we it got, just stops raining here. We'll we gotta get some good weather to do some speed tests. Yeah. Thought process is, this next video, in the next couple of weeks, we're gonna do a speed test versus the M3 stretch versus the M3 plus normal. So whatever you think is faster, let comment below and hopefully you can win this uh, prize here. And I'll use the same props when we do the speed test. Yeah. All right, thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe, like, comment below and all that other stuff.